All right, so we're here going to meet Justin Gray at the John and Mary Brock football facility here at Georgia Tech. Let's see if we can't uh, get our project done. I'm Paul Van Walt. This is Justin Gray, student manager at Georgia Tech. Kevin Wu, my partner, and we're about to do a physics project for you. Here's what we're about to do. The types of projectile problems we have traditionally been doing in class involve taking an object and launching it at a certain angle from a certain height and figuring out if it lands wide distance below us, how far away from our launch point it lands. We will be doing the opposite in Dick's experiment, launching it from a lower height and having it hit a higher height. The object we'll be using is a football. In this project, we will be taking a snap attack football machine and launching a football at 45 degrees and 25 meters per second and determining how far away we need to place a snap attack football machine in order for the ball to hit the crossbar of the goalpost. Now, in order to determine this, we're going to have to take some inside looks at the different components acting on the ball. First off, we're going to have an X velocity, a Y velocity, an angle, and a normal velocity. Our initial angle is going to be 45 degrees, and our initial velocity, 56 miles an hour, or 25 meters per second. Our initial X velocity, 17.678 meters per second, and it's the same as the Y velocity. Now, in order to solve this problem, we're going to have to assume at first that the ball didn't hit the crossbar. In order to do that, it's just a simple projectile motion problem. We're going to use a two-triangle method, indicated by this graphic here. We're going to figure out how far it takes to get to the top of the ball's flight. Now, remember, at the top of the ball's flight, our velocity is going to equal zero meters per second. This is because gravity has caused the ball to decelerate in the y direction. In order to solve for the distance, we're going to have to figure out how long it took for the ball to hit a y velocity of zero. Given our equations, we find that t is equal to 1.8 seconds. We'll multiply this by our x velocity in order to get our meters, and then we multiply that by 2 to get the total distance traveled. Now remember, this only calculates our distance if we did not hit the crossbar, but we're assuming that we do hit the crossbar. Therefore, we're going to have to find that smaller distance where it would have gone had it not hit the crossbar. We use this by using the exact same methods in the last problem and our exact same equations, except this time we know our y height. We are launching it from 50 inches and it's hitting the crossbar at 120 inches, so 1.78 meters. Going through all our steps and our equations again, we find that our x distance is 2 yards, or our final distance, 67.675 yards. Unfortunately for us though, the snap attack had a simple 1 through 10 dial, rather than a speed dial, so the app I had made to calculate the distance given initial velocity was useless. Instead, we had to calibrate the velocity by figuring out and measuring how far the ball would travel if it did not hit the goalpost, just as we had done in our explanation before. That's sorted out, we can get straight to our project. As you could see from our first few trials, we were getting pretty close. We were getting just above or just below the crossbar on nearly every single launch. And then, after a few trials, success. We finally hit the crossbar. There it is.
safety. We came really close a bunch of times to hitting the bar, and we actually did hit the bar one time, so this experiment obviously is a success. Again, thank you so much to Justin Gray, Georgia Tech student manager. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you had a good time. I would like to thank Tom Connor, equipment manager at Georgia Tech, as well as Justin and Paige for taking time out of their day to help me. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.